Do you know how much fuel and electrical energy we use annually in the US? I'll tell you. 134 billion, 51 million, 456,212 gallons of gasoline. And 4 billion, 158 million, 234,814 megawatt hours of electricity. How are we going to sustain energy production at that level? I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, there's a variety of technologies that are on the table. Wind, solar, fission, fusion, coal, hydro, conservation, natural gas, biofuels, tidal, geothermal. I don't think any one of those technologies represents the answer. I don't think any one individual here has the solution. What I think? I think that through conservation, we can come together and directly impact our future energy portfolio. Now, I know we've all heard of ghost chargers or programmable thermostats, change your light bulbs. I'm here to talk about something that's flown under the radar, impacts most Americans, and I would submit every single person in this room. So what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to raise your hand and keep your hands raised high if you own a vehicle. Keep those hands up if you've checked the tire pressure in that vehicle in the past six months. Keep them up if you've checked in the past three months. Keep them up if you've checked it in the past 30 days. To the select few that still have your hands up, I thank you for not only participating, but for being part of the answer. Underinflated tires cost us 2 billion gallons of fuel every year in the US alone. Let me say that again. 2 billion gallons. To put that in perspective, that's equivalent to the oil production out of the great state of Alaska over the course of 70 days. It's 10 times the total amount of electrical energy that's produced annually in the US through solar power. Financially speaking, take all of the money that's been raised for ALS through the ice bucket challenge, multiply it times 70. Underinflated tires, when you look at them, there's a safety concern there as well. 1% of all automotive fatalities can be attributed to underinflated tires. And considering that 25% of all vehicles on the road have underinflated tires, not just safety, but energy con I mean, this is an opportunity for us. Now, if you were one of the people that quickly lowered your hands, you probably have underinflated tires. <laughs> you should know that tires lose between 1 to 2 PSI per month. Well, over the course of multiple months, that quickly leads to underinflation. Decreased fuel economy, wasted energy. But it's not your fault, right? Because spotting an underinflated tire, well, that's not easy. How many of these tires do you think are properly, properly inflated? Well, would you be surprised if I said one? Just one. And that most people don't even consider their tires till they're well over 80% low? So what does it mean? Well, when you look at a vehicle that operates for an entire year with four tires that are just 20% low, that wasted energy, well, that's equivalent to replacing 17 light bulbs in your house every single year. Or over the course of that year, not turning on your coffee maker. Financially speaking, for all the college students in the room, we're talking about more than a year's supply of ramen noodles here. So how are we going to continue to produce at the rate that we're consuming? I don't have that answer. What I can tell you is that I checked my tires last week, and I make a habit to do it every single month, because it's one more thing I can do to be part of the answer. And I challenge everybody in here to do the same. Take time every month to check your tires. Don't wait for that light to come on. It's too late. Together, we can be part of the answer. And together, we can cut into that 2 billion gallons of wasted fuel. Thank you. Thank you.